Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I am Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, Illinois. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Catholics in Russia are celebrating 30 years of the re-establishment of the hierarchy after the fall of the Soviet Union. Following the disintegration of the USSR, the Catholic hierarchy in Russia was inaugurated with a solemn enthronement of Archbishop Tadeusz Kondrusevsky in the Church of San Louis of France on April 13, 1991. To mark the anniversary, there were solemn Thanksgiving celebrations in more than 300 parishes across the country. The Archbishop of Moscow, Paolo Pezzi, recalled the great sacrifices made by believers who suffered persecution during the Soviet era. The Church in Russia has also formed a postulation commission to promote the cause of the Russian Catholic martyrs of the communist rule. They include Servant of God Bishop Antonin Maletsky of Leningrad and nine companions who were killed for their faith. Most of the Catholics in the country are of Polish, Lithuanian, and German origin. The Holy Father has reached out to the people of Brazil, who he says are undergoing, quote, one of the most difficult trials in its history, unquote. The largest South American nation has over 13.6 million coronavirus cases and has recorded more than 361,000 fatalities, according to a study conducted by the John Hopkins University in the U.S. In his video message to the 58th General Assembly of the Brazilian bishops, the Holy Father said he is spiritually close to the hundreds of thousands of families who have lost their loved ones to the pandemic. The Pope said the coronavirus has not spared anyone in its trail of suffering. There are growing fears about Brazil's P1 coronavirus mutant, which is spreading rapidly, posing a hurdle to the authorities and vaccine developers. In what will be a public proclamation of the Catholic faith in the month of May, dedicated to Our Lady, the Archdiocese of Minneapolis and U.S., will conduct its annual family rosary procession on Sunday, May 2nd. Archbishop Bernard Hebda will lead the procession, which begins at 2 p.m. local time on the state capitol grounds, and it will culminate at the Cathedral of St. Paul. First communicants in their solemn attire will be part of the rally, and parishes have been instructed to bring banners representing their communities. Held in collaboration with the Family Rosary Processions Association, the Rosary Rally will follow pandemic protocols and the event will be live-streamed on the Cathedral's Facebook page. The Catholic Church has always encouraged processions as they remind believers that the Christian life is a journey towards God and heaven. China's brutal treatment of its Uyghur Muslim minority is once again in the spotlight with more than 100 British parliamentarians signing a letter seeking sanctions on senior Chinese Communist Party officials. A motion has been scheduled in Parliament next week during which lawmakers will debate whether Beijing's treatment of Muslims in Xinjiang province amounts to genocide. On Thursday, April 22nd, Conservative Party MP Nusrat Ghani will open the debate on mass human rights abuses and crimes against humanity in Xinjiang, and there could be a vote thereafter. According to UN estimates, more than one million Uyghurs have been detained under brutal conditions as part of what Beijing claims to be a vocational training program to combat terrorism. The city of Cebu in the Philippines commemorated the first Catholic baptism in the archipelago 500 years ago with a solemn mass celebrated by Nuncio Archbishop Charles Brown on April 14. In his homily, the prelate recalled how Father Pedro de Valderrama, the chaplain of explorer Ferdinand Magellan, baptized the ruler of Cebu and his wife, christening them Carlos and Juana. A statue of the infant Jesus was presented to Juana and it later became one of the most revered icons 
and it is popularly known as the Santo Nino of Cebu. The Archbishop said the Catholic faith has deeply entered Filipino culture and transformed it. He also spoke of the paradox of the Christian faith which sprouted in Asia being brought to Asian nations by Europeans. The noon show concluded by exhorting Filipinos to bear witness to the faith in all corners of the world. The Diocese of Charleston in the U.S. has filed a lawsuit against South Carolina's discriminatory Blaine Amendment, which prevents private schools from receiving public funds. On April 14, the Charleston Diocese, along with independent colleges and universities, filed a case at the district court pointing out blatant racial and religious discrimination in the Blaine Amendment. The amendment bars financial assistance to families facing difficulties due to the pandemic just because they send their children to the school of their choice. To help such families, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster had set apart some relief funds in 2020, but they were blocked by the state Supreme Court on citing the amendment. The mortal remains of Servant of God Father Emil Capon a U.S. Army chaplain and prisoner of war will be brought to his home state of Kansas where they will rest in the crypt of the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception of Wichita Diocese. Father Capon, who was known for his compassion and service during the Korean War, died in a prison camp in Korea in 1951. Posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor, the chaplain was counted among the unknown soldiers and was interred in the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific in Hawaii. On March 4th, the U.S. agency, tasked with tracking prisoners of war and soldiers missing in action, announced that Father Capon's remains have been identified. The priest was declared a servant of God in 1993. The Pakistani government has posthumously honored a Catholic nun with the nation's third highest civilian honor. Sister Ruth Lewis, who has dedicated her life for differently abled children, was given the Sitara e Imtiaz, or the Star of Excellence, for her outstanding contribution to society. A member of the Franciscan Missionaries of Christ the King, the sister was known as the Mother of the Forgotten, and she spent half a century caring for physically challenged children at the Dar ul Sukun or House of Peace and Love in Karachi. Sister Ruth passed away on July 20 last year in a city hospital where she was admitted after testing positive for COVID-19. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.